kitchen, where we bring Middle Eastern cooking to America. In today's show, I'll be making different kind of kibbeez. I'll be making potato fried kibbeez, rice fried kibbeez, and burger fried kibbeez. First kibbe, I'll be making potato chop. It's fried potato kibbe. The paste is made by boiling the potatoes until soft, then peel them. Mash the potatoes using a meat grinder or potato ricer. To the mashed potatoes, I will add egg, cornstarch, and salt. Mix it well into a smooth paste. Small portion of the potato paste is shaped into a ball, then make a hole inside the ball with your finger. Place some meat filling inside. Close the paste around the filling, flatten and deep fry until golden. The other kind of kibbe, uh, it's called kibba halab. It's fried rice kibbe. The paste is made by boiling the rice that is seasoned with salt and turmeric until cooked. Drain the rice, set aside to cool. Then place it through potato riser. Add egg and salt. Take a small portion of rice paste, form it into a ball using your finger, make a hole, place some filling inside. The other popular kibbe is called fried kibbe, it's burgol kibbe. The burgol is soaked in cold water for 30 minutes. Take handfuls of soaked burgol, squeezing all water out. Add ground lean meat, salt and spices, mix well. Knead to form a smooth paste. Take a small portion of paste and shape into a ball. Make a hole with your finger. Place some filling inside. Close opening gently. Shape into an oval shape. Point it at each end. Deep fry until golden. Handed down. To some that might mean recipes or the family cottage. But to a farmer, it means something more. It means honor, integrity, a love for the land. And when it comes to milk, it means only the freshest will do. From our farms to your table, Michigan milk. Because a cold glass of nature's best is pure Michigan. And pure Michigan milk is Kroger milk. Start our program today by preparing the potato chop, which is the potato fried kibbe. Before we do anything, we have three pounds of potatoes here. I'd like to use Idaho potato. It's the best starchy potato for the potato chop. And um, it's about six to eight pieces, depending on the size of the potatoes. I have uh, some water uh, in, the, in the pot, and we're gonna bring the potatoes to boil. We cook it for about maybe 15 to 20 minutes until nice and soft. While we are waiting for the potatoes to cook, we need to cook it all the way until soft. We will prepare the filling. I'll have two tablespoons of uh, vegetable oil in a skillet like this. We'll heat it up until nice and hot. And to this, I will add one small chopped onion. You will saute until soft. The onion has been sauteing for about two minutes and it's nice and soft. To this, we will add two pounds of ground beef. I like usually um, using um, lean beef. Uh, this is 90% uh, and 10% fat. And we will set it until brown. You see how brown and tender the meat is. We always season the meat with salt and spices after it turns brown so it will not draw any liquid from the meat and will then will tend to dry out a little bit. So to this we will season with some salt. I'm using about one and a half teaspoon of salt and about one to two teaspoons of mixed spices, Bahara. It's a blend of many spices together. It's a black pepper, cumin, cardamom, cinnamon. It's a beautiful blend. And I have a recipe uh, or many other recipes for these mixed uh, spices in my cookbook. We will turn it off 
and we will set it aside to cool completely before we add the parsley to it. Potatoes is uh, been cooking for about 30 minutes. Of course, we'll let it sit for a while to cool off a little bit. So it will be uh, cold enough for us to handle so we can peel it. So now we will peel it off. We want to peel the potatoes off while it's still warm. We don't want to peel it when it's too cold because it will be so hard for the potatoes or the skin to come off actually. But it's much much easier when it's still warm. Peels right off. The potatoes are already peeled and they are cool enough for us to handle. So now we will use the potato ricer to smash to mash our potatoes actually. We could use the meat grinder or uh, we could use the uh, potato ricer. So all that we need to do is I find the potato ricer much much easier and it gives you much finer um, uh, mashing than the meat grinder. So we will keep mashing all the pieces of the potatoes. You see how easy it is and how practical the potato riser is. We will let it sit for about two to three minutes to cool off before adding the other ingredient. Potato is nice and cool now for us to handle. Uh, now to this we will add two eggs. We will beat the eggs just so it will be easy to incorporate into the paste. And then two tablespoons of cornstarch. We want to season with some salt. And then now we will mix everything into a smooth paste. Real easy paste to prepare. Only a few ingredients. The main ingredients, of course, are the potatoes. And you will see how easy it is. The egg and the cornstarch will work um, almost as a glue uh, to put everything together. And uh, this will help um, getting a nice paste and nice uh, kibbies when using the right uh, kind of potatoes. So I like to use Idaho potatoes that's uh, available at Kroger's. Uh, it has more starch in it and it will be perfect for preparing this paste. The meat filling is nice and cold. To this we will add half cup of chopped parsley. This will give it a lot of flavor and give it some freshness and also some color. Now, but it's optional. If you don't want to use the parsley, you don't have to. If, uh, many people I know that they only use parsley instead of using onion and parsley, but uh, this is all optional, whatever you prefer to use. You could use both or one of them. Now the filling is ready. I will dip my hand in some oil because the potato paste is very sticky and take a small portion the size of a small egg actually and then make a hole in the middle just like that go around take about one tablespoon of filling in the middle Bring the sides together over the filling to close everything and then form it into a flat patty just like that and place it on a plate like this. Real easy. Now make sure you dip your hand in oil every time because the uh, paste is very sticky. So try to form it into a smooth ball and then using your finger make a hole in the middle. Place some filling. And 
bring it over the filling to unclose. These kibbis are very, very popular um, Middle Eastern and mostly Iraqi uh, kibbis. Uh, they are used as an appetizer or um, great. The kids love them great with sandwiches for kids. Uh, you can use them um, even for a brunch or for dinner. Making these kind of kibbis might take some practice. So of course, if you are making it for the first time, uh, you might have a hard time uh, forming these uh, kibbis or even have time, hard time uh, filling them. But uh, practice uh, is the key for making these kibbis. The more you make, the more often you make them, the better you will get into making them. And they are very, very flavorful and real easy to make and very healthy. It's a whole meal in one kibbi. Now we have all the kibbis here. We will cover them and they go in the fridge for at least one hour. One to two hours, even four hours before we fry them. The potato chop uh, we're sitting in the fridge for about two and a half hours actually and uh, the oil is nice and hot. We will start frying the potato chop. We will add one at a time always and we will wait 30 seconds before we add the next one. Especially when the kibbis are sitting in the fridge, the temperature of the kibbis is very cold. So if you add a lot of them, it's going to reduce the temperature immediately. So that's why you have to wait a few seconds before you add the next one. As soon as we see uh, the surrounding of the KB is turning uh, brown, we will flip it to cook it on the other side. Look how gorgeous and beautiful they look. Love the color. Doesn't take very long to cook these kibis. And I believe these are ready to come out. Drain any excess oil using slotted spoon. Place them on a tray lined with paper towel. Potato chop is cooked on both sides. What a beautiful golden color. We will remove it and place it on a tray lined with paper towel to dry any excess oil. They look amazing. They smell so, so good. Handed down. To some, that might mean recipes or the family cottage. But to a farmer, it means something more. It means honor, integrity, a love for the land. And when it comes to milk, it means only the freshest will do. From our farms to your table, Michigan milk. Because a cold glass of nature's best is pure Michigan. And pure Michigan milk is Kroger milk. Now it's time for us to prepare the paste for the rice uh, kibbi, uh, the kibbi halab that we are uh, going to use today. Uh, for this, we need uh, two cups of rice that I already washed and drained. Actually, I soaked it in water for about 15 minutes before I drained the water. This will go in a pot like this. And to this, I will add six cups of water. And one teaspoon of turmeric. This is going to give us that bright yellow color and also we'll season the rice with some salt about one teaspoon and we'll place this on the stove we'll cook it until the rice is nice and tender and all the liquid is uh, absorbed uh, through the rice while we are waiting for the rice it's boiling it's gonna take maybe another 10 to 15 minutes for the rice to cook we will put the lid back on and we'll let it cook. Uh, we will prepare the filling that goes uh, uh, inside the kibbi. Uh, for this, 
First of all, I will heat one tablespoon of vegetable oil in a skillet like this. To the heated oil, we will add half cup of slivered almonds and we'll saute just for a minute or two until golden brown. They'll, they'll be nice and toasted and they will bring all the flavor out and they will be great in this filling uh, besides the raisins that we're going to add to. So we'll just try to fry the slivered almonds for a minute or so until golden. Almonds are golden and toasted. I will transfer them back into the bowl. Now to the skillet, I will add another tablespoon of vegetable oil and then I will add two pounds of ground meat. Again, I'm using lean meat. We'll cook it until nice and brown and tender. Meat is nice and brown. Now we will season with some salt. Of course, it depends on how salty you want it to be. There are no rules on how much spices and salt you like to add. You want it to be fairly spices, but not too spices. And then we will turn the heat off and let it sit on the side to cool off before adding the raisins and the uh, toasted slivered almonds and the parsley. We'll check on our rice. All the water is absorbed through our cooking and it's beautiful. It's nice and mushy and it's soft and this is exactly how we want it. We want it to be completely cooked. We will let it sit for a few minutes to cool off. In the meantime, we will finish preparing the filling. Uh, the, the meat is nice and cold. To this, we will add the toasted or actually the fried slivered almonds and we will add half cup of golden raisins and half cup of chopped parsley. We'll mix all these together. If you don't like to use the almonds you don't have to. If you want to eliminate the raisins you don't have to. Uh, you could choose whatever um, filling you, whatever uh, extra things you need to add to your meat, but the combination of the almonds and the raisins and the parsley with the meat, it's going to give you that amazing flavor uh, for the filling. And I always think it's the best to use for kubba halab. But of course, it's all optional. You don't have to use any of these if you don't like to. The rice is cold enough for us to uh, press it through a potato ricer. You see the turmeric, it gives you that bright golden color and it tastes so good too. These kibbe are so filling and so they are so uh, so nice as an appetizer even uh, in a sandwich or for uh, as lunch to this we will add one egg We don't need to add any salt because when we cook the rice, we already seasoned it with uh, salt and turmeric. So it should be just perfect. And we will knead and mix the mixture to form a soft and smooth paste. It smells so good. I love the turmeric. And uh, we all know how healthy the turmeric is. It's very high in antioxidant and it's um, believe to uh, be a good spice to lower cholesterol also and it has many many benefits and now we are ready 
to make the kibis, of course, always. The paste is very sticky, so we would like to uh, brush our hands with, or dip our hands in some oil. Take a portion of the paste. And make a hole with your finger in the middle. Place some meat filling, about one tablespoon. Bring the sides over. And shape it into an oval shape. Both ends pointed. And place it on a tray like this. These kibis are very famous Iraqi kibis. Uh, even though they are called Koba Halab, which is a city in uh, Syria. But no one knows where the name Kibbi Halab came from. But um, they are very, very famous and very well-known uh, Iraqi Kibbis. Making these Kibbis, you'll see many ladies, uh, friends, sisters, they all sit together, catch up with uh, whatever uh, news they have. And they sit and make many, many of them and then fry them. And most of the time, they freeze very well. They'll freeze them. Or if they have a special occasion, uh, they all sit and uh, share stories and make these kibis. So much fun. Now the kibis are ready to go in the fridge. We need to leave them in the fridge for at least an hour to two hours before frying them. And they look amazing. Now it's time to fry the kubba halab. The oil is hot and it's 350 degrees. We have about two inches of oil in a heavy skillet like this. And we will add only a few at a time. We don't want to reduce the temperature of the oil. By adding many of them at one time, it will reduce the temperature of the oil and they will not fry uh, properly. It will take about one minute to cook on each side. They cook real fast. The bahalab is nice and golden. We will remove it using a slotted spoon to drain all the oil. And we'll I love the color that the turmeric gives these kubba halab. Uh, you can add more to make them even more yellowish, or you can reduce the amount to make them pale yellow. Now it's time for us to prepare the filling for the burger kubbi. We have two tablespoons of vegetable oil here. We'll heat it for a minute or so. The oil is already heated. We will add one small onion that's chopped finally. And we'll saute until soft. Onion is nice and soft. To this, we will add two pounds of ground meat. Try to use lean always. And we will saute until brown and tender. This filling has only two ingredients, just the onion and the meat. And of course, the spices and the salt. Meat is brown and it's tender and it smells really good. We will season it with some salt, about one to one and a half teaspoons of salt, and some mixed spices. Mixed spices is a blend of many, many spices. Of course, it depends on how spicy you want it to be. You can add more or less. And we will turn the heat off, and we will let it sit to cool off completely. To prepare the paste for the uh, burgul kubbi, first of all, I have two cups of fine burgul here that I soaked uh, in water, cold water, for about one hour. 30 minutes to one hour should be ideal for that. You see how much is swallow and uh, you need to 
take handfuls of this and squeeze all the water out and place it in a bowl like this squeeze all the water out as much as possible all the burgo nice and dry now to this we will add one pound of lean ground meat very lean this is 95 percent and five percent fat only you will season with some salt and some can be spices it's a blend of paprika cumin red pepper black pepper it adds a lot of flavor to the skippy and we will mix everything together by hand first to make sure everything is nicely blended now the meat and the burgol are nicely mixed together i will transfer some of this into a food processor just to finish uh, preparing the paste it will be nice and smooth and soft we just gonna process it for a minute or so just pulse and that's it Transfer it in a bowl like this. Should be ready to. Now we'll get everything out. Beautiful, nice and smooth and soft. The filling is nice and cold. And now we will prepare the kibis. We always dip our hands in some oil. We take a small portion of the paste, the size of a small egg, and we will make a hole in the middle with the finger. Place some filling in the middle and bring the paste over the filling to enclose, shape it into an oval shape, both ends pointed. And that's it. Real easy to work with. Place it in a tray like that. So we'll continue making all the kibbis the same way. These kind of kibbi are great with some salad or even, uh, I like them with some potatoes too also. They make a really nice uh, meal and um, you can also, um, uh, many people like to uh, make a sandwich out of them too, which is great too, with some tomatoes, some pickles, great to have and they freeze very well. You could make many of them and freeze them, but what you have to do when you take them out, just heat them in a toaster and they will be like a brand new. Now the kibis are ready to go in the fridge for about hour to two hours before frying them. Now to fry the kibis, I have uh, about two inches of uh, oil in a skillet like this, heavy duty skillet like this. And I heat it up, uh, it's, the thermometer is reading 350 degrees. And this is the temperature we are looking for, for frying these kibis. So it's nice and hot. So we will start frying these kibis, the, the burger kibis. We will add only a few at a time. Um, we don't want to reduce the heat of the oil to a certain point. So we will add one at a time and we don't want to overcrowd them in the pan. So probably four and five maximum in the pan. Anytime we add one kibbe, it's going to reduce the heat and uh, we want to keep that temperature 350 degrees so we can have even a nice frying 
के बीस एंड यू वो सी इट टेक्स ओनली वन मिनट टू फ्राई द के बी एंड ईच साइड यू वो फ्लप इट ऑन द अदर साइड यू सी हाउ ब्यूटिफुल नाइस एंड गोल्डन कलर इट इज and we'll continue frying them from the other side real fast it is beautiful look at this beautiful color we will remove it with a slotted spoon like this drain as much oil as possible and place it on a paper towel to drain any excess oil perfect they look so beautiful We will remove the other kibbies. Always use a slotted spoon to drain any excess oil. We will let them sit for a few minutes to cool off before serving them. much time we have for today. In today's show, we made the famous Middle Eastern kibbis. Uh, we made burgul kibbi, we made potato kibbi, and we made rice kibbi. You find all these recipes and many, many more in my cookbook, Treasure Middle Eastern Cookbook. And uh, you see, usually we serve these kibbis with some condiment. There is some uh, cucumber, some pickled cucumbers, just torchy, olive, some cucumber and tomatoes, and some bread. And also it's served with uh, some uh, amba sauce, or some ketchup, or some steak sauce. Uh, we hope to see you next time with more exotic dishes from the Middle East. Now you can watch my show every single day, twice a day, on MEA uh, at 7 p.m. and 9 a.m. Uh, in case you have any of the episodes that you missed, you can also watch them on YouTube. Just go to Samira's Kitchen. And we hope to see you next time with more exotic dishes from the Middle East. لاقتناء كتب الطبخ مالتي مختارات من فنون الطبخ ترجل من الإسترن كوك بوك A Baking Journey اتصلوا على my email scholag11 at yahoo.com Handed down To some that might mean recipes or the family cottage But to a farmer it means something more It means honor, integrity, a love for the land And when it comes to milk it means only the freshest will do. From our farms to your table, Michigan milk. Because a cold glass of nature's best is pure Michigan. And pure Michigan milk is Kroger milk.